The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello Rovers fans and welcome back to our matchday experience as Rovers are motoring towards the end of the season. It's another home game today. Blackpool at home in for me what is one of three really important games now for Rovers' season if we are to make the playoffs. And if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button and please give this video a like for us. Yeah, so um, next three games for me, um, we have to win all three. Uh, we need to start putting pressure on the sides around us. Uh, we need to start letting them know that we're still here. Um, obviously, it's not disastrous for us at the moment, two points outside the playoffs. But with teams starting to play each other, with the run of form that Rovers have been in recently, we do need to start finding winning ways again. And Blackpool at home is a good opportunity to do that. I think it's one win in 12 that they've had away from home. They do obviously possess a couple of dangerous players. Josh Bowler uh, is one who springs to mind. And obviously, uh, Shane Lavery as well. Two players that could hurt Rovers. But... For me, I think if Tony Mowbray goes positive and attacks that game today, I, I do think we get the job done. So for that reason, I do want to see that 4-2-3-1 formation or the vari uh, variation of it that Tony Mowbray does. The wing-backs have served as well. It's made us tight. It's made us secure. But I think we've showed in the last few games that when we are on the front foot, when we have got attacking players in attacking positions, Rovers are still a dangerous side and it was desperately unlucky, wasn't it, away at Coventry when we had Dak and Diaz back on the pitch. We looked really lively, really dangerous. So I want to see that from the off today. Let's start Bradley Dak. Let's start Ben Brereton Diaz. Let's start Tyrese Dolan. Get the job done. And once Bradley Dak tires, you can bring John Buckley on and, and see the game out in that way. So that's the way around. I want to see it. I think we just need to be positive. We need to go for it. The fans want to see that as well. So hopefully Tony Mowbray uh, will... Uh, pay our wishes in that regard. A uh, couple of injury doubts today. Uh, Daryl Lenahan and Ryan Niambi are doubts, so let's see if they make the starting lineup. But I think there'll be a decision there if those two are fit and he does go four at the back. Is it Niambi or is it Lenahan at right back? Uh, might be too soon for Radicadra, but as I say, we've got the other players now back fighting fit in Dolan, Dak, Diaz. You know, the attacking options are there for us. So, yeah, about to hit the road. I'll be meeting up with Luke. The weather looks amazing, so we are getting into. The time of year where we're going to the football and the sun is shining. So I'm going to hit the road. We will catch the team news very shortly. Baking hot inside Ewood, and we see him. There he is, look, silent. Mr. Professional, here's my partner in crime, yes, Luke. Yes. Hey, mate, this weather's banging, isn't it? And beautiful, look at this, like a glorious little tan of shiv. Yeah, the occasion. It's beautiful. Dan's had an haircut and all, look at him. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, it must be that time of year. Team news, though, Luke, we'll do this quick because yeah, it's going to get loud again. It's going to get very loud. The players are coming out. It is uh, five at the back, which I'm a bit disappointed with, so I was hoping we go four at the back and be positive. So. Mowbray's obviously going to keep it tight, try and win the game yeah. second half a little bit, what's your thoughts? Well, if we, if we saw Nyambi played in the second half when he moved out to right back, if we could see an absolute record of so performance and accident, um, we all right, right, yeah, he's playing as a wing back, but if he's moving forward, he'll be on Tony Ford, that's what he's doing. 
But yeah, if we can see now, they're moving forward. Hopefully, yeah, if we can see. Um, oh, the damage done to that from that inside as uh, Gats has come off the bench as well. Dola doing, making a deuce to himself, up for doing bits and uh, he has from the off. Rental music here today as well. Fantastic. What an occasion. What weather. Let's go. Let's get the job done. I'm feeling it back on. The atmosphere building here. Yeah, all about Stony Park today. Love it. Uh, Blackpool ball and Odin fans. So come on. And there he is. Let's do it. Come on. Come on, now we're over. Thomas Kaminsky, what a ball! Sam Gallagher, good goal. First half goal for Rovers, first half since December. Two big chances for Blackpool before that as well. We should be 1 0 down, we're not. 10 minutes. That's oh, Brereton Diaz, no Gallagher. Love it, 1 0, come on. Oh, the PA's had an absolute mare. We thought it was Sam Gallagher, he announced it's Brereton Diaz. We can't bloody see it was Sam Gallagher's goal. Lovely little finish. Yeah, as I say, Rovers deserve to be one down. A uh, mistake from Scotty Wharton. Hamilton should have scored, and then another chance from the corner after that. And yeah, we've got a first half goal finally, but Blackpool got free kick right in front of us now. But that will settle the nerves a little bit. Still baking sunshine. I'm burning here, me fetch of 50. Luke's in front of me. What are you saying, mate? I'm burning here, I need me fetch of 50. <laughs> I can't see, you've got glare off his head. <laughs> Oh, gotta go! Oh, gotta go! Come on, you blue! Half time at Ewood Park, and Lou, we've seen a goal in the first time, half. Time, yeah, goal. that's it, we've seen a, a goal in the first half. Rovers 1 0 up. Uh, first 20 minutes, bit chaotic. Uh, a bit, yeah, a bit end to end. Blackpool should have been 1 0 up, make no mistake about that. But then one lovely long ball from Thomas Kaminsky. My mate on a text message said, first touch by Sam Gallagher was like Ronaldo. Second touch like Adi Akinbae, third touch like Lionel Messi, but what a little finish. Good little finish from Sam Gallagher, even though the announcer thought it was Brereton Diaz. But the crowd going Diaz as well. <laughs> it did, the crowd were chanting Diaz, Sam Gallagher wondering what the hell's going on. But uh, no, 1-0 half time, and I think to be honest mate, we got control of the game afterwards, didn't we? Um, first 20 minutes of chaos, but after that, most of the ball was played in the Blackpool half, but they do look dangerous, I think, with the pace. So I think we need a second goal. Yeah, I'm thinking some decent players. I mean, they're they're a good little side. Hamilton with a chance earlier on that should have scored. I mean, if that's a Rovers player doing that, I'm fuming. Uh, it's one on one with Kaminsky. Kaminsky has made a great save, so um, six of one half a dozen. But you're expecting your striker to score that. So Blackpool fans will be disappointed there. Um, Lavery looks a live wire as well, I think. Um, they've got Josh Bowler to come off the bench, so we do need to go, we need to study this a little bit. So, um, yeah, let's go into the second half and right, we'll we'll go, so let's get a second goal. I've got one more question for you though, mate. Why have we got the floodlights on? Talk about peeing money up the wall in this day and age. Why are the floodlights on? I mean, we're having this um, energy bill crisis. And, uh, the sun's beaming down and yeah, the full lights are on, it's, it's, um, it's unbelievable. It's my house is freezing at the moment, so I need to speak to Stevie Wagon about that. Oh, love it. But no, half-time 1-0 Rovers, as it stands, we're still outside the playoffs, so uh, maybe we'll get a goal or two and, and get ourselves in there. But so far, so good. Come on in, Blue. Got Ricky T next to me, Rick. Um, I do think the defence is looking a little bit nervous. Luke and I have just said, so far, so good in a good half, but actually I think Scott Walton is looking a bit shaky we've had a couple of defensive slips and things with you know the pace of Hamilton and, and Lavery is looking pretty dangerous and if Josh Bowler does come off the bench you know we just need a pretty no-frill second half don't we just keep it yeah. simple I think What's just, your ball? they just need to go to the basics don't they there's been a few little trying to do a couple of fancy tricks and stuff like that and it's not come off we just need to if it's, if it's back here just get rid of it <laughs> yeah. simple as that we need to hold on to this lead we can't concede um, otherwise the panic stations will really, are, really start then so uh, yeah back to basics for me and hopefully change the studs as well get some rugby studs on or something like that <laughs> so, they don't stop, so, so they can stop uh, falling over so that's yeah, it fingers crossed but hopefully you know Rovers are a second outside in general so shooting into this goal and everything hopefully we can just get the job done 2-3-0 would be nice get that goal difference closer to Sheffield United and, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and then we can look forward to the next one against Peterborough but yeah come on you blues come on look who I found at Ewood Park the legend Lomax here he is Alex <laughs> uh, that half mate on the whole I think we're looking alright but you must be feeling a bit nervous about the slips of our defence how are you feeling? I think overall pretty even half I think both teams have pretty good chances um, you'd have to say probably a draw would be a fair result at the moment but second half Rovers kick into the Blackburn and you've got to be expecting them to yeah. um, reinforce the lead and got hopefully going to win the game 
and um, if we win today obviously sets us up well for the rest of the season with um, Sheffield United obviously drawing earlier on so yeah. big big second half I think we definitely need the second goal I'm a bit anxious about you know the mistakes that we've made and the pace Absolutely. that they've gotten behind so as you say second goal and as the fans, uh, players come out now shoot yeah, into this goal come on you Blues come on you know, we said about Rovers equalising quickly last week Blackpool had just bloody done the same three minutes 48th minute here one all looked like an absolute scramble can't actually tell what's going on at the other end but yeah, just look really sloppy and loose ball. They banged it in. Uh, don't even know who's got the goal yet. They've not announced it. Looking like a defender, I think. But yeah, they're going to be absolutely sucking the ball into that net now. So we need a response. One all, got in. Couple of subs for Rovers now. Ty Golden is one of them. Bradley Dak coming on. John Buckley's coming on as well. And it's Ryan Diatti, so it looks like it's going to be a formation change for at the back, probably. Daryl Enahan right back. This is the right change to make. We're looking really dicey at the back, the five at the back. So if you're looking that vulnerable, we might as well go to the four at the back. And let's just take the game to him. But yes, yeah, it's been a dicey first 15 minutes. Blackpool, a little bit all over us, and their fans are absolutely behind them. So this hopefully is a change to change the tie for us, but it'll be four at the back now, I think. Five minutes to go here and the game's really, really flat. Um, Bradley Dax come on and added a little bit. Um, got Ryan Giles now on the left after an injury to Scott Wharton. and maybe it's just going to be one cross, one set piece, one just something where we can just scab this 2 1. But you know, fair play to Blackpool, they raised it in the first part of that second half, got their equaliser, and you know, now they're kind of saying to Rovers, we'll come and win the game. Then they brought Richard Key on for Shane Lavery, so. We'll see, but it's very flat at the moment, very, very flat. The crowd have not really got anything to cheer for, so we're just looking for something out of nowhere. One all, a bit of petulant scenes at the end. Little melee in the middle of the park. Bradley Dyke getting up looking for lack of urgency, lack of fight towards the end. We never looked like getting the winner, and he's at the end of the playoff dreams. We'll see. Disappointing result back. Back in from the game, and oh, what a dreadful second half that was from Rovers, really. Um, you know, last week we spoke about the commentary game and, you know, coming out a different side and, and Blackpool came out and, and punished us, didn't they? You know, they, the tails were up and they got the early goal in that second half and for 15, 20 minutes it looked like they were going to get another one. And then really it was over to Rovers to, to go and make it happen in that second half, wasn't it? Um, Mowbray changed it up with with the substitutions, bringing on Bradley Dack and, um, and obviously changing the formation uh, as well, uh, bringing on John Buckley. But... You know, we didn't fashion any big chances. We didn't have that golden chance. You know, the closest we came to scoring was probably the offside moment from Bradley Dack, which, you know, on first viewing did look like it was offside as well. I've not seen any replay or anything like that. But, you know, in truth, it just wasn't good enough in that second half. And, you know, if we do want to make the top six, we've got to start turning draws into wins. We've start, uh, got to start getting wins on the board. And, and today is another lost opportunity to do that. You know, last week we lost the opportunity to get the victory at home to Bristol City. We did the same and, and we've done the same today as well against Blackpool. So, you know, we're running out of time, we're running out of games and, you know, really running out of hope, um, if I'm being honest. Um, I felt that we needed to win the three next games starting with today and, and we've not do, done that and I just think we're leaving, us, uh, leaving ourselves a, a lot to do. Um, you know, I really don't fancy... Preston away needing something and, and Bournemouth at home could be a bit of a difficult game as well. So I think we're, we're ultimately leaving ourselves a lot to do. But, you know, whilst the teams around us are dropping points and whilst we're getting little bonus results like we've had today with Hull going to Middlesbrough and winning, you know, it keeps us hanging on in there. But this season's just felt like a slow and painful death, hasn't it, for Rovers? And the form hasn't been great, but somehow we remain in contention. It remains mathematically possible, but we're just waiting for that ignition that, you know, as fans, we can see that the players are actually going to turn on the form, turn on the style and do something similar to what Nottingham Forest have done or Luton have done and, and obviously keep that consistency and, and get the results going. But, you know... Uh, it's it's it was really a, a disappointing second half performance. I, I just didn't see urgency. Um, I didn't see 
you know, fight really. Um, you know, I, I saw on Twitter, Glenn put something out, you know, Glenn from Rovers chat saying that for the first time this season, he's probably thinking that they've not left any, uh, they've not left everything out on the pitch. And I think I'd have to agree with him with that. Um, you know, I was watching them in the last five minutes and when the ball's going out of play for throw-ins, there's no one sprinting to get the ball, you know, didn't really feel like there was any urgency. And really the only time that we saw the, the the fight that we're so used to was when the players were scuffling in stoppage time, you know, when Bradley Dack got the book in. So unlike Rovers today in the second half, you know, we can always rely on Rovers to have a good second half performance in particular, especially at Ewood Park. So really disappointing the way that that second half went. So you know, the fans were so flat. The final five minutes, you wouldn't have thought it was one all and Rovers were, were chasing it down, trying to keep the playoff hopes alive. It was it was a really disappointing game. But, you know, if we talk about the first half, um, again, I felt that Rovers were pretty lucky in the first half as well. Um, I think that Blackpool should have scored, obviously, when CJ Hamilton got played straight through and just a word on that as well, you know, Scott Wharton um, was the one who made the mistake when CJ Hamilton had that chance. I thought that Scott Wharton looked really out of sorts today. He looked nervy, he looked edgy, he was miscontrolling a couple of things and wasn't like him today, so he didn't have the best day. And and the defence as a whole, there just seemed to be little slips here and there, you know, the pitch was watered, but they were the ones slipping, so it didn't really fill you with confidence Um you know, that we were going to keep a clean sheet. And that's ultimately why I said at half time that we needed the second goal because I did fancy Blackpool to score today with how edgy that we looked at the back and how loose we looked at the back at times. And, and the way that Blackpool did score their equaliser, you know, came from, you know, a really scrappy moment after the corner. But yeah, back to the first half, um, you know, the CJ Hamilton chance, another one they had from a corner. I felt that Blackpool had a nailed stonewaller penalty in the first half as well. That happened right in front of me. But... The goal when it came was a really nice moment and it was a first half goal, wasn't it? Lovely ball from Thomas Kaminsky. His distribution has not been the best at times this season, but what a pick out, what a touch from Gallagher and, and a lovely little finish as well. Really pleased for Sam Gallagher. And um, yeah, half time, as I say, we needed um, we needed the second goal. We needed to be able to put the game to bed, but we didn't get the opportunity to do that, did we, with how early Blackpool scored. So it really left us floundering a little bit at 1-1 and and in truth, you've got to say a draw is is probably the fairest result for Rovers. You know, you could probably make a case that, you know, maybe we might have lost that game with um with how dangerous Blackpool were looking. So, yeah, really disappointing. Um, it's the the slow and painful death. It's the fact that it's still mathematically possible. That's like an absolute mess with your mind, isn't it? Because Rovers are not playing like a side that deserve to be in the top six. Rovers are not playing like a side that are going to go and beat a side over two legs in the playoffs we're certainly not playing like a side that's in form but we hang on in there and whilst we're hanging on in there I'm saying the same things every week on these videos that whilst it's mathematically possible whilst we've still got a chance whilst other teams are playing each other you know we've still got a chance and who knows maybe we can win four or five wins uh, four or five games in a row but I just don't see it happening um I think the players look low on energy in the second half um we didn't get our dangerous players into dangerous positions enough you know Tyrese Dolan didn't really have much today um Brereton Diaz has missed a sitter in the first half to make it 2-0 we didn't really see you know him down that left channel enough in that second half Sam Gallagher works really hard put some good tackles in but he's not really had a chance and we only looked like fashioning a chance in that second half when Bradley Dat came on with his movement so yeah it's uh as I say, it's an absolute mind mess. It's hope over expectation, really. But we roll on, don't we? So Peterborough away. Um, if we don't win that game, then we probably have to say curtains. You know, you've got to go to Peterborough away and win if you want to, to get promotion. Just look what Middlesbrough did there a couple of weeks ago. or well, last week, wasn't it, when they won 4-0. So you've got to go there and beat Peterborough, set up that game against Stoke, and then who knows, maybe we could go to Preston and get the win. But drawing today, as I say, has just put some pressure on other games. Are we running out of time? Are we running out of matches? Let us know what you think in the comments box, Rovers fans. But yeah, flat performance in the second half today, flat feeling after the game. It's got the feeling of the inevitable now that we're just waiting for it to be mathematically impossible. But um, yeah, Rovers didn't didn't deserve to win that game based on the second half performance. And it's just a shame that 
We've got our noses in front. We've done the thing that Tony Mowbray's been wanting us to do for a long time, which is get in front in the first half. And ultimately, we've not seen the game out. So disappointing. We roll on to Peterborough. Hope you enjoyed the match day experience. Once again, it was great to enjoy it with some of the other Rovers chat lads there and, and that. But uh, let us know what you think in the comments, how you're feeling about things. Please give this video a like. Please subscribe to the channel. And we will see you soon for the Peterborough game. Come on, you blues. The Rovers chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by Six Yards out.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.